Oh my god. Hello all, it's me, it's me, it's MPD, the Dunder King himself. And I'm joined today by Janelle and Necroxis on our brand new show, Decked Out, the podcast dedicated to Hearthstone. How are we doing, guys? Great. Yay. Also, Dunn, I feel like your title is going to grow longer and longer as we continue. We'll just yeah, more things added longer. on to it. That's well, how titles should go. Well, it, it does, ladies. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, now uh, now I've sufficiently lowered the tone. Let's talk about children's card game. Yeah. It's not a children's card game. No, yeah, of course it's for uh, it's for only the manliest of the manliest the manliest of men, rather. Exactly, it's for adults and shit. With the amount of money people are going to be putting into this, I hope it's for adults. I hope we don't get a story in a couple of months' time of like a kid spending thousands of dollars on the i like on the ios app when it comes we out will. somebody's gonna get drunk and they're just gonna keep clicking the button like they do on facebook and five hundred dollars and the next morning and a hangover later they're like god what did i do last night well as long as while they're drunk they don't open the packs that's fine because opening packs is very satisfying it's a very good feel doing it <laughs> so that will at least cheer them up <laughs> Yes. <laughs> All right, so let's get started with our first thingamabob. Yes, our first thingamabob. <laughs> <laughs> Which I've... is the card of the week brought to us by Pride himself. What's going on, guys, and welcome to the card of the week right here on Decked Out. I am Pride, and the card for this week is Questing Adventure, one of my own personal favorites. I love this card. I've played it many, many times uh, through the various mini games that I've played throughout the Hearthstone beta. I love it. It is in probably most of my decks, I believe. Um, absolutely love this card. Um, I actually have a deck built around this card. Uh, of course, I've won and lost because it's so easy to get rid of a card, but um, it's quite good. I love it quite a bit, actually. And... Uh, I do have uh, several decks that are kind of built around buffing this guy up just in case uh, I want to do something like that. It's not a very good. It's not a very good idea though. Don't don't do that. Don't don't base your whole deck on one card. But Questing Adventurer is a three mana cost card, and it gives you two attack and two health, so uh, it's not too terribly bad, I suppose. About your average three mana cost card, minion card. However, this guy has a little secret. Not really a secret, if you click on it, I'll tell you. But uh, whenever you play another card outside of Questing Adventurer, you gain a plus one, plus one. So you'll, you, I mean, you can stock up on a couple of one or two cost uh, mana cards. Uh, especially buff cards or spell cards are always nice. Uh, but you lay this guy down, and well, I tell you what, we have this video. Why don't we just show Questing Adventurer in action and... Uh, you can see for yourselves why this is one of my favorite cards. Give me a quest. <laughs> it's time for a little roll. The battle. Blah. Quest accepted. Who you want me to Quest accepted. Reporting for duty. Here come the pain. Accepted. Hey, 
And there you have it. Absolutely amazing card. Uh, how do you beat it? It's quite simple, really. Just don't let him get that high. Um, take him out no matter what, because if you if you let him live long enough and you've got an opponent that has, uh, a lot, especially if you see an opponent that still has a lot of cards in his hands, no doubt he's probably got a couple of uh, cards saved up because he's been waiting for Questing Adventure to come out for quite some time. And uh, I just, I, I, that's, I mean, that's the biggest, best thing I can tell you whenever you come up against it. The only way that people have beaten me is to either, you know, have one of those uh, Kill Command cards uh, where you destroy a minion um, or something along the lines of destroy a minion that has been injured. Uh, the only way that they can really take it out is they they have to throw everything at you. And because realistically, especially when you have that card, you want to throw down as many cards as you can. So you're going to have a lot of other cards, like a lot of other minion cards. You can take out any taunts or anything that they've laid on the field, and boom, you've got a 10-plus attack card that's going to be hitting the uh, the main guy. It, it's a maximum of, what, three turns? Uh, even if you're at 30 health, and you're going to be out. You're going to be out of the game. So you have to get rid of this card quickly, and the best way, of course, to do that is to just attack it and get rid of it. Uh, you may have had some other plans, but this is a card game, and those plans have always, are always going to get spoiled one way or another. So, best plan of action, if you come up against this card, and he's getting awfully powerful, take his ass out. And as quickly as possible, because this guy can and will come up and just absolutely destroy you. So that has been your card of the week, Questing Adventure. Now I'm going to hand it back over to Jan, Dunn, and Necroxus to continue on with Decked Out. We're Thank back. You. I'm with Bach. Yeah. Yeah. Thank, we're, you. That Thank you, Pride. <laughs> Questing Adventurer. Fuck that card. Uh, Agreed. I hate that card. I hate that card so bad. <laughs> it's, it's no good. Zero out of ten would not pick. No, I have had my I have I've had my ass handed to me many a time by a questing adventurer that I just could not deal with at the time because it was hidden behind uh, a strong taunt monster like uh, Mugshan God or Mugshan Warrior. I forget his name off the top of my head. I'm gonna check his name because I can. Necro, how about your experiences with him? You know what I I. I realized how dangerous he can become when I first started, but I haven't played any games where people have decided to try and build a strategy around him. Because for me as a warlock, I have kind of a lot of spells, so I just go after him right away. I usually have like a Shadow Bolt, which just does four damage to a minion, or one of my other damaging spells that I just try to get off at him right away. Even if there is a taunt, I can then waste those spells killing the taunt and then get him right away. So. It is definitely the kind of card that you have to take care of as soon as it hits the board. Yeah, there, there, yep. there are a couple, but I feel uh, questing, questing Adventurer is actually probably the best one uh, because of the way it escalates very quickly just by you playing cards. There's a lot of cards that gain uh, attack or attack and health if a monster... I keep saying monster like you go if a minion rather <laughs> uh, dies... Uh, there's there's a hunter card. It's called Scavenging Hyena that gains plus two attack, plus one health every time a beast card dies. No. But but I mean you need to get the uh, beast cards on the field to die to power mm -hmm. up this thing. Whereas Quest and Adventure, you can play just about anything, and well you can literally just play anything, and it keeps stacking up. It, it can get very silly very quickly. Yes. All right, well, I think we're good to move on to the news and blues segment of the podcast, where we talk about the news for Hearthstone and all the blue posts. Yes, we're going to try and bring you any important updates to the game that we think you should know about, as well as any significant blue posts. So I'm just going to get right into it. Um, I guess we're just going to alternate people reading. Um, the first question that I thought was significant from a blue post was someone asked, is your matchmaking rating determined for your entire account or for each one of your decks individually? Because, of course, you can make up to nine decks customized. Um, and they were the answer was, your matchmaking rate rating is currently determined for your entire account. If you would like to play a different deck or class and test it out, um, feel free to uh, play an unranked so that your matchmaking, your matchmaking rating will not be affected. Yes, so basically and I'm... Want, yeah, go ahead. I was a little nervous about that, except 
Hearthstone's awesome with the unranked mode, where you don't have to get a hit to your MMR every time you play. Mm -hmm. And by the same token, I mean, it, it's not for everyone, but if I make a new deck, I, I'll just go play in the in the regular queue and if it affects my mmr that's okay because i'll just get it back with my normal deck but i feel it it gives me a truer test of that deck mm -hmm. because i'm playing at people at my skill level so i can see if i i sort of know what i'm getting at i, I hope you all understand me because i haven't got a clue actually <laughs> yeah i think i understand what you're saying the thing about that is i don't play decks like that if i want to play test something i want to make sure that my card balance is right i want to make sure well i don't have to worry about mana resources in this game but um i'm pulling enough creatures i'm not pulling too many useless cards not that the actual deck is a good concept because i wouldn't have made the deck in the first fucking place if i didn't think it was a good concept I just want to make sure that the balance is right, and then I want to go into a real match. You are way more hardcore than I am. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Jan's our hardcore member of this podcast. I just, I, 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 I just don't even care. I, I'm just there so I can uh, use the emote system to uh, display. Uh, in in StarCraft, we call it BM, so I can display bad manners in uh, via emotes. Like when I hit him for like 12 on turn 2, and then apologize for that just happening. <laughs> it, it, it's really good when you do it as Garrosh, because he's just got that tone. He's like, I'm sorry that happened. He's not sorry. He's not sorry okay. at all. Jeez. Alright, well, the next question that was replied to by a Blue was, um, I haven't read her or heard about this anywhere yet, but I was wondering if there have been steps taken to keep that kind of player, you know the one, done. His name's done. Oh, me. During your turn, or when he or she is losing, or what have you. And the Blues say, while there are integrated ways that prevent emote spamming, you also have the option of squelching your opponent if you do not care to view or hear opposing emotes at all. Dunn, how do you feel about being squelched? Um, I, I don't actually mind because I really like like the little the quotes and I like the voice acting. So I'm playing them just as much for me as for my opponent. And at the same time, like if, if they pull out a good play, I will say, well played. Uh, if I've got to a point where I know that I'm going to lose, I'll just throw out a well played and then concede the match. Because <laughs> I, I I don't want to sit there and like waste someone's time, which I, I could do, I guess. I could just sit there and uh, <laughs> just not click end turn, and they'll have to wait for whatever what the turn timers there for. I uh, I actually like my phone rang while I was streaming yesterday, and I sort of because I pace when I'm on the phone. And I ended up not pressing end turn in time. And by the time I came back to my computer to press it, the fuse had burned all the way down. And then the screen exploded and I took two damage for not, for not ending my turn on time. <laughs> uh, I was like, oh, that's not, that, that, that's, that's quite good. But oh, shit. I don't know. Yeah, I love you. It's, it's, I, I kind of like it because it encouraged, it, like, you can't grief. Really. Oh, yeah, yeah, for sure. But, but at the same time, if real life happens and then you're taking two damage in your uh, in your children's car game, that's quite that's quite annoying. I can imagine. Yeah. I mean, I'm all for keeping it, but I can I can see some people when real life gets in the way, that could annoy some people. Yeah. So why don't you read our next one for us, Dunn? I certainly will. Uh, will Hearthstone have server downtimes for maintenance like other Blizzard games? If so, will it correspond with the normal Tuesday maintenance times? And before I read the answer, I'm going to say I hope not. Uh, <laughs> but the answer is, if Battle.net is under maintenance on Tuesday, Hearthstone will also be unavailable for play as it is with our other games. That and is it was unavailable today with was it? Tuesday yeah. maintenance. Yes, I, don't, I don't know. I was at work. <laughs> I'm working well, now. I mean, I can excuse that because they introduced a new Battle.net like, interface thing, which I think is really cool. Like, it, it, it mm -hmm. uses all of your games that you have for Blizzard on, like, one screen. It's kind of like Skype, in, or not Skype, Steam in a way. And you can just click between each one. And, I mean, I guess it makes sense if that system's down, then you can't get into the game. Yeah, but they also had let you know on that new system that they were coming down, and exactly at what time. Oh, I, cool. Yeah, 
It was awesome. <laughs> I, I, I don't like it. <laughs> I don't like it. You don't it, want it down ever? Not no, ever? I, I'm, I'm alright with it being down at certain times. I just wish that they worked on Hearthstone when the other games were up. Oh. Well, actually, that, that so much doesn't bother me. I hope they work on... They're not working on Hearthstone while the other games are down, so I can play Hearthstone while I wait to get back into StarCraft or WoW. That would actually be a really good idea. That to they stagger their down like times. That. Yeah. yeah. I can and see then how. they'll always have someone playing. Hmm? Something for them to keep in mind. Yeah, Blizz. Exactly. All right, so you, our next question. You can question. have that one for free, Blizz. There you go. <laughs> the tip from us to you, decked out. Uh, all right, next question. Um, question. Blizzard has to know by now that most of us hate the one gold per win system. How long until you actually talk to us about this? Before I read the answer, I should explain. When he says one gold, one win, you have to win five games, and then you get five gold. Um, uh, to, so, give you a, to give you a sense of what five gold is actually worth, to buy a single pack of cards, that is 100 gold. Oh, uh, to, yep. shit! To buy a, a key to play in the arena, that is 150 gold. Holy god. How much does so, gold cost? I'm assuming you can um, buy it. You, d you don't buy gold. You just you can buy into the arena with real money. You can buy... Oh. Card yep. like packs of cards from two all the two packs of cards all the way up to forty packs of cards for mm -hmm. real money. Um, I think one hundred fifty gold. The arena key is approximately one dollar ninety nine. So it's it's not a massive cash sink, mm -hmm. but it, it is definitely easier than just sort of like grinding up the gold. But there is something that yeah, we'll talk about later on in our Q and A about gold and real money so let's address that later let's yeah so let's, let's get the answer the to this blues answer all right so the blue said um it is something we're aware of but keep in mind we are very early into the beta rewards and the reward system have to be very carefully evaluated and discussed but it is being discussed what's her answer so they're probably working on balancing other things i think specifically they're working on the heroes right now tweaking their abilities and the um, bonus for going second. Am I mistaken? Um, I, I think they are, because there are some heroes their abilities seem stronger on paper than mm -hmm. others. Let's compare, like, the mage and the, uh, hunter ability. They're, they're kind of similar, and they both cost two mana. Uh, the mage can hit anything on the field for one. Whereas the hunter can only hit the enemy hero, but he can do it every turn, and he hits for two every time. So if you look at that on paper, it looks like the hunter is, while the mage is slightly more versatile, I, the hunter is arguably a stronger skill. So, And the warlock skill sucks. I, really? I, think, the warlock I, skill I, I think it's amazing, yeah. As someone who I, plays um, exclusively warlock, I think it's No, nah, I, I don't like it. It sort of turns... Like, I understand that they want to put as much of the WoW toolkits of the characters into the game, which mm -hmm. is why the Hunter deck has a bunch of trap cards, and the Mage is a bit... A lot of the Mage-centric cards are spells, or mm -hmm. minions that benefit from spells being played. But I, I'm not a fan of drawing extra cards, either. Uh, I don't like doing it, especially because there's a fatigue system in the game where when you, draw, when you run out of cards, it's as if you've gone off into the fog of war and you start taking damage every turn at an escalating rate and you can eventually or someone will come up with a strat or a build where they can just wipe people out and the, the uh, warrior will be quite good at that so will the priest and I wouldn't be surprised if we see that in the future well we'll so, get into class balance later I, I guess we will yeah but I, I, I don't like it but some of the heroes do need some fine tuning yeah mm hmm I think, but that's why it's still in beta. So yeah, right. I mean, beta good. is beta. We're... It's been out for like four days, so people. Yeah. Yeah, guys, give them a chance. It'll get there. <laughs> but 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 also give us more gold for wins. More gold, yes. Yes, God, it should damn, be a little that's bit more. Ridiculous. Mm -hmm. All right. So our the next question that was answered is: If a minion has divine shield and gets polymorphed, does the sheep have divine shield, or does divine shield go away because it's no longer in the card text? 
And the blues answer was, when a minion is affected by a transform effect such as polymorph or hex, everything about the minion is changed and all effects are removed. For example, if a minion has divine shield, blessing of kings, blessing of might, and plus one, plus one, when they're polymorphed, they lose everything and become a basic one, one sheep. And I think that that's gorgeous. Uh, yep. That's how you deal with the uh, question adventurer, by the way. Just like, exactly. Mm -hmm. Fire exactly. one of those cards. Um, I, I mean, I get, I could do a whole segment on polymorph and hex. I hate them. I hate them. Uh, they're <laughs> far too. They are far too cheap for what they can do. There's yeah, no limit. There's no limitations on what you can cast. That there's no like certain degree of health. Like this is too strong to polymorph. Mm -hmm. You can you can polymorph anything. Or hex yep. anything, and they only cost four mana, so you can be doing that from turn four. Mm -hmm. I, I don't, I don't like it, but yeah, I mean that pretty much speaks for itself. You do lose well, divine shield, you do lose taunt if you have it, etc., etc. Removal is supposed to be powerful. Uh, yeah, but That's what I, this is, I, I, I play hunter deck, and I don't have any, so. <laughs> well, that's, that's, I agree. That's a different problem. No, no removal. removal. You don't need to kill their removal. I, I feel like, even though I don't play a Paladin, the idea that you can polymorph a Divine Shield mob, like having played WoW for eight years, my mind's like, that doesn't make sense. But I, <laughs> un I understand it in the context of a card game. Just for me, yeah. I'm like, no, you can't do that. WoW has taught it, me you can't do that. It needs to have Hexproof, which is totally a magic ability, but shut up, it needs Hexproof. <laughs> All right, just someone here in our uh, Twitch chat, and if you are watching, feel free to comment in the Twitch chat, and we might refer to you. Uh, once got my Illidan sheep, and I just about cried. I can imagine. Yeah, I had yeah. Nazdormu, and he the same thing happened. I played him the next turn. Nazdormu got sheep, and I was like, oh no. Well, and just, then, I, then I removed him from my deck. That's, right? that's another thing you guys gotta while you're playing. That maybe should be our tip next week is. How to deal? How to play your cards, expecting to have your cards removed. Right. So maybe we'll talk about that next week. Yeah, um, maybe I'll so, pay more attention while you while you're telling us about that because, as I say, I'm just throwing out my cards. I'm like, oh, I'm going to do this. <laughs> <laughs> I like I likes the pretty animations. And Dunn, you're going to read our next blue post about I, I certainly am. Uh, based on one of your posts, I know that you can target Lord Jaraxxus, Eridar Lord of the Burning Le I don't feel that needed to be in capital letters, but... It did. It did. Uh, okay. With Sacrificial Pact, formerly Grimara's Sacrifice, whether he is acting as a minion or a hero, however, I am unclear as to what happens after he's targeted if he is in the hero position. For everyone who doesn't know, Lord Jaraxxus is a... I believe he's a 9-drop card... Verify. Um, uh, I believe... Is, is, yeah. yeah, he's a 9-drop card, and what he does, he's battle cry. As soon as he's played, he destroys your current hero and replaces that hero with himself. Yes, and he uh, can cast an elemental every turn. You get an Inferno, I believe it's a 6-6. Six, six. Yeah, And he also has a weapon that's, um, what's the yeah, stats three, on the weapon? Three, uh... Three damage, I'm not sure what the durability is. I can't see that in I think my, it's just uh, forever. Collection. I think he just gets it. But no, it has a, it no. has a durability. It's like it's like something obscene, like eight. Then I believe. Could be. Uh, and it's he has really fifteen hot. health. So basically, if you're a warlock, you don't want to play that unless you're below fifteen. Right. I've so seen some um, some amazing plays where they get. He... God, fuck my life. I think we lost Jan for a second. It's okay. We're back. You were, you were saying, John, yes. you've seen some amazing plays. Yes, where the Warlock gets down to, like, three health. And then he's like, Jaraxxus! And then, uh... Yeah, I'm working on it. <laughs> and, uh... The, you know, the, you just know that the other player is like, God, fuck my life! Like... Yeah, that happens a lot when I'm against druids, and they're just sitting there, and they've saved up two, uh... I can't remember the name of the spell. It's their... What what's a druid's main heal? Healing touch? Is heal, it the eight the eight heal? I hate yeah, he, that one. Heal for eight for three mana, and then they've got two of them in their hand, and they just shoot up by sixteen, and then yep. you just quit the match. You're like, no, mm -hmm. no, I tried so hard. Um, and second point, if you didn't know, sacrificial pact. 
uh, destroys a demon on the field, and there's a little bug. I think it's a bug with this, where it's you can not. use you can use sacrificial pact on any demon on the field, even if your opponent played that card, and that doesn't sit right with me. But um, a he destroys them and heals your hero for five. So as well, again, that's removal. And as long as you have removal, it's great. If hunters yeah. don't have it, that's a balancing issue. Okay, wow. And I'm just reading the answer now. Even as a hero, Jaraxxus is still a demon. If he is targeted by a sacrificial pact, he will be destroyed and the Jaraxxus player will lose the game. That's <laughs> wrong. That, that so, would be soul crushing because uh, sacrificial pact is a two drop spell. Yeah, so if you are a warlock and you're playing another warlock, be very, very careful save, with that. Spell. Save one of them. I mean, <laughs> I I play exclusively a Warlock deck thus far, and I don't have Draxus yet, but I wanted him for the longest time. And I know it's a very specific situation that this would actually happen in. Like, you have to be versing another Warlock, and they would have to have it, and you'd have to be Draxus. Still, it kind of makes me not want to have Draxus now. Like, I don't think that's... If, if you can play it, like, right away somehow... Like, as maybe, like, a secret, oh, destroy, I'd be fine. But as a hero, that doesn't mm -hmm. sit right with me. I think it does a really, really great card. It's very... It's very versatile. It makes the game a little more interesting, plus it helps a warlock with that whole life tap thing. You know, it's like a heal. Yeah. And even if you are you don't know you're going up against a warlock, that's a very small chance. And just because you draw a card doesn't mean you have to play a card. Right. And, it, and I mean, it's even if you're not going up against a warlock, there are certain situations. Anyone can get the card Imp Master, and what Imp Master does is he has one attack, five health, and at the end of every one of your turns, he loses one health and summons a one-one Imp. So there is potential for your opponent to be using demon cards, even if you're not playing a warlock. So it's it's definitely a useful card to put in. In a deck because when I first. Oh, yeah, it, and Sacrificial Pack, it heals yourself. If your demon's yeah, down to one health, five. then you kill it yep. yourself. That's what I've done with my, my Voidwalker taunt. He's at one health. I'm like, well, I have another one, so there's five health. And that's another next one. Well, I just think it raises the point that a lot of these cards, the class specific cards, seem very niche, and you think, an initial initially glancing at them, you're like, well, this isn't that useful. But then when you think about it a little bit more, it does open up potential uses for it. And I, I, I kind of like that. It's like when I, I, I've i got a Warlock deck and I had Summoning Portal, which is a 0-4 monster, and it lowers the mana cost of everything by two. So mm -hmm. everything, and it's cheaper. And I had this card and I said, well, I'm never going to use this. And I disenchanted it because I wasn't oh. buying a Warlock deck at the time. And then uh, I, I believe I watched a video of TV and he used it. And then I realized that it, it's all like minions that you play have their mana cost reduced by two. And then it's like, this is actually more useful than I initially thought. I should mm -hmm. have thought about this more before I uh, disenchanted it for 40 dust. I think I got 40 dust for it. Maybe I got 20 dust. Maybe I got five dust. I, I can't remember. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I mean, it is it is better, and there is definitely one planned uh, total wipe of the beta, so uh, I, I've got another chance to get it. Yeah, for sure. Yep. And, and, and you might be able to build it soon. Oh, I've, I've, I'm sitting on 630 dust. Uh, you can make go. one easily. Uh, I just want to check the cost of it to, to craft. Uh, it, it only costs 40 to craft. I could build two now. Yeah, there you go. go. So, uh, I mean, we could we could talk about crafting and disenchanting for for hours. But yeah, I think that, that's a whole topic in itself. Yeah, so. let us move along. Um, yeah, let's move on. And there's a whole bunch of more blues posts available to you guys on the forums. If you want to check that out, head over to the Hearthstone forums. Uh, the blues are very very active right now. They have a lot of answers to the questions. So, yes, head on over, check it out. So yes. next up, we have Q&A. These are some questions you guys have sent us. 
In the future, if you'd like to leave us a question, you can find our forums on thesmokinggamer.com, and you can also send me a tweet on Twitter at Janelle5, J-A-N-A-E-L-L-E, and the number 5, and we will get your questions on the podcast. Oh, and yes, an of email. course. There's an yes. email. It's uh, decktypodcast at gmail.com. It's right there down at the bottom of your screen in the middle. So send us your questions, and we will love to read them. Done. Why don't you start us off? I certainly shall. This is from the forum by a good man by the name of Talthar. You may know him on YouTube as Drakar. He is a man of two names, at the very least. Uh, his question is, are games able to be played by more than just two people? If so, does it have to be an even number? Uh, as it stands... Moment, ooh, yes, go ahead. At the moment, no. It, you have to have two people, and that's the end of the story. Uh, in the future, they may implement new modes, like the arena mode, where you can do things like two-headed giant, for example, from Magic. Or you might be able to do a free-for-all three-on-three, or three players versus each other. At the moment, the uh, what do you the UI is not yes. capable of doing any of those things. Right. Uh, I'm not sure how much it would, how much work it would be to change the UI and like the coding and stuff to do like free for all battles or like tag team battles or something. But I think it'd be really fun. I'm pretty sure it wouldn't take much work, but it would take away time from actually getting the game out. So I don't think right now would be the best use of their time. Oh yeah, I don't think it, I don't think we'll see it during beta. Maybe. I know, maybe an expansion or a patch, and then they can give us Death Knights as well. Yeah. You know, the, the hero class that should be in Hearthstone Heroes of Warcraft, maybe. <laughs> Just saying. Uh, I'd like monks. I know. I'd, I'd like monks. There's a couple of monk cards in the game, but they have nowhere near as much representation as gnomes. Surprisingly, oh, yeah. this there is this so is, many gnomes. This is the gnome <laughs> game. If you, if you like gnomes, if you if you're pride and like three other people. Uh, who, who have felt the, the oppression of the gnome Bryce. This is the game for you. There's Not only are there loads of gnome cards, that like nine-tenths of them are really good cards. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Gnome's OP nerf gnome. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe a little bit. Maybe just Mechatork. Dwarf is All fine. Right. Alright, I got a question on Twitter from Quarry. And he asks, I have only one question. Why am I having such a hard time beating Garrosh? Uh, really? Be because uh, he's a true orc warrior. <laughs> Is he now? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. The uh, the patch, not the patch, the trailer where he beat up Taran Zoo for World of Warcraft indicated to me that he was a true orc warrior. <laughs> what do you think, Necro? What do you think Quarry's problem is? I would have to know what deck he's playing, because as a Warlock, I've never had a problem with Garrosh. He was the first hero. I, I think I lost him one time versus AI, and then I just dominated the rest of it. So I would have to know more information. It's hit, hit, One of the problems is keeping up on the armor that he builds up, because um, if you let that stack... His hero power gives him two armor, which basically is just extra health for him. You need to make sure you keep a lot, tabs on that, because that can get really high really fast. Yeah, especially he, with some... It's also yeah, helps. It's like there's card. a there's a card he has. I think it's called Shield Wall or Shield. No, it's Shield Block, which adds five armor, and you can have two. The Damn. card limit in the deck is two of each card, so you can have two of those. So that's essentially ten extra health. So armor is basically like healing. Uh, yes and no. It's it's tracked as a separate number. Well, right, but it, but it, it protects take your the health. Armor. Is yeah, there a way to take, take the, armor, the armor off without actually hitting someone? Um, I don't think so. I think you have to do damage to the minion, to the hero. Oh, I, nice. I, so he's I, basically a healer. Basically, actually, thinking about it, I've, there might be one way to do it. If you have, a, and I haven't tested this, I will next time I find myself in the situation where I can test it. I will. I think if you silence. And something with armor, it might remove the armor from it because silence, the priest card silence, or there's a neutral minion called Iron Beak Owl, which also has a silence when you play it, basically is a dispel and it just takes everything away. 
Yeah. So it might work on armor as well. I'm not too sure though. I will have to check that. You also someone in the chat. Um, let me see. His name is Umbradomo. I guess how you pronounce that. Talked about the damage that he does. Garash has a lot of weapons that do quite significant damage, especially his his. I believe it's epic. His epic weapon Gorhal does a lot of damage. So if I had to suggest it based without knowing what deck he plays, try to be a, maybe a little bit more aggressive towards him because you can't let Garash get enough armor and weapon cards, otherwise you're in trouble. Mm -hmm. Well, there you go, Corey. Try to do what they said. Or play Garrosh. <laughs> or only play Garrosh, yeah. The only, the only way to be Garrosh is to be Garrosh. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right. So we have one more question, right, Necro? Yep, we have one from MacJN. I believe this was on Twitter. Yes, Jan? This, yes, you, this was on Twitter. Um, the question is, how do I win without paying tons of money for cards? And this was something that I was worried about when I heard about Hearthstone and the fact that it was going to be pay for decks. But as much as we were just talking about how the quests only give you five, or the the uh, the reward only gives you five gold when you win five times, there are other things in the game called quests. And basically, you get one every day. Um, the last couple of days, I believe they give you like a choice. You can do two different things. Um, but essentially, if you do these things, you get extra gold. For example, yesterday for me, it was play two games as a priest and win, or get, and you'll get 40 gold. Or mm -hmm. play three games as whatever hero you want and win, and you'll get 40 gold. Um, and they're always doing stuff oh. like this. Uh, yeah, so there's one every day. I believe you can only do one per day, is you, you can my do, You can do one per day, but if you don't finish the daily quest of the day before... You can have three quests active at the same time. So oh, okay. you can, if you don't finish it, you, you, you can build you can up just your finish quests. It, you can just finish it tomorrow. Yeah. Oh wow. And yep. And besides that, there are also certain milestones that they don't tell you what they are in the game yet. I have a feeling they'll tell you at some. They're at, they'll add this in. It'll be like, oh, you win a uh, uh, hundred games, you'll get a hundred gold, or you beat all of the AI on expert, you'll get a hundred gold. Um, it's just doing very specific things. I actually had to look up some of them because they're not there's not like a list of those of those ones in the game yet, but there are besides just playing and winning, which you're gonna have to play the game a lot to to get gold to buy packs. So it's, it's a card game. Uh, I would suggest you know the quest. Make sure you do your quest every single day, um, and try to like do the AI, beat the expert ones, um, and just keep keep playing. Basically, Blizzard adding in more stuff to give you more gold, so it's not it's not hopeless. And even even still, uh, there's certain things like the first. Once you've unlocked all the decks, you can go into the arena for the first time. The, your first time into the arena is free, and if you build a good deck going into the arena, you can get like a lot of wins in the arena. Then you can the prizes there are packs of cards, gold or dust, to craft your own cards. And talking about how do I win without buying a bunch of decks. If you do stumble across any cards that you can disenchant, then you can make the cards that you want. So you don't have to buy 50 packs just to try get Lord Jaraxxus. You can <laughs> just eventually you will be able to craft him. Yep. Yeah, so keep that in mind. And also, as that blue post said earlier, they are trying to tweak the balance so that the rewards will be worth the effort. Yeah, Blizzard is one of the companies I couldn't see them purposely making it worse for gold. Like, I know some, like, free-to-play games are like that, where it's obviously more beneficial to buy it. Blizzard, I feel mm -hmm. like they'll, they'll get a good balance at some point. All right, and that was the end of our questions. Thanks again. Remember, email, Twitter, and on the forums, you can reach us, and we will answer your questions next week. So now we come to the main topic of the podcast, and that is... What will Hearthstone bring to the TCG landscape? What good things are we going to have? And how will this innovate, hopefully, everything else? Yes. Uh. <laughs> That's my view, just yes. Uh, <laughs> actually, there was, a, there was a large debate before the show started between Rioris and Howitzer, uh, where... Rioris was stressing that it isn't, in fact, a trading card game because there's no trading, it's a collectible card game. And then Howie made a very strong argument that because you can disenchant cards and 
A very strong argument, Rioris, uh, that you were creating just and therefore trading with the computer, with the AI. Mm -hmm. And I sat here just like, yes. Yes, both, <laughs> the, both of those things are things. All right, so <laughs> well, let's get out into this. their opinion is it is a trading card game, and that is the end of the story. All right, I th I'm really excited for Hearthstone ever since they announced it because of what I think it's going to bring to the genre just because this is our first really great TCG online game. Uh, you have Magic has the only one that's been fairly successful, and it's shit. It's terrible. I re I was telling Necro just yesterday, I don't know why it's, why it's so popular. Um, it's because people, like, and this, this is by no means true of every person who plays Magic the Gathering, but people that play Magic the Gathering are not the most social of, of creatures. creatures. I mean, I know there's like... I didn't draft, say it. There's draft knights. <laughs> no, a, that's a lot, so a lot, not true. A lot of people, I'm sure, go to like these draft nights and everything, but for every person that does, I bet there's like three or four who just stay at home and play within that small group and they don't get out there. Well, mm -hmm. You know what's funny? No, I know so Jan true. does this, so that's why I didn't support Don's argument whatsoever. It's so, so. That, that's, that's, <laughs> no, I know she does this as well, and that's why I pre uh, like preface my statement with, I'm sure this isn't true of all Magic players. <laughs> in my ass. No, but basically, like this, is, this gives like trading card games to everyone. It's a very easy to understand game, the, but the animations and the polish on the game itself does make oh, it like so great. they are on it but it makes it very accessible to the yeah maybe the more casual player and they can download it on their ipad and i well, don't know play on the toilet or something and that can be playing with people all over the world uh Magic it is online has that too but it doesn't have the polish and i really think the polish is what's going to set hearthstone apart from magic online besides the fact that you don't have the Magic Online, I've found the community is shit. Every time I've played a game, the other person is either, they either don't talk at all, or they're assholes. Of course, this is because these are the the uh, less than social creatures who are into Magic the Gathering, but don't want to leave their houses, so they play it online. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm, just, I'm, I'm just saying, I'm just saying. Well, I'm hoping it steps up Wizards of the Coast game to improve their Magic Online. And just overall, and to do everything. I'm, I'm also really excited to see what kind of cards come out of this. Not just in Magic, but also in uh, Kajito and Yu-Gi-Oh. And Pokemon, people still play that, right? Well, yeah, but I don't believe Pokemon takes things from other games. I think. Well, no, Pokemon is very much. This is our. Uh, this is our yeah. Game Boy game, but it's cards. I think they have an online trading card game as well. I would not know. <laughs> I, I, I just have a. I just have a vague memory of TB doing. Uh, I, I'm I'm referencing Soto or Biscuit a lot today, but he did a video of it like two years ago. Okay. And and he didn't know any of the names of the Pokemon past Gen One. So that was that was kind of funny to watch. <laughs> oh jeez! Um, All right. But I I'd like to see what other card games off the back of this are like. Well, this online thing seems to be working for Blizzard. Let's. I want a a, a good Yu-Gi-Oh, uh, like iPad app. Mhm. Mm I would play that. So I can play that because I really like Yu-Gi-Oh and. But the people who play Yu-Gi-Oh around me, like in this area, have all stopped playing Yu-Gi-Oh, and my, I kept beating my brother to the point where he stopped playing with me. So I've got this deck, this brilliantly crafted deck, which I put a lot of money into getting like all the cards. And I, I didn't do it sensibly buying the individual cards. I just bought blister pack because I like opening things. <laughs> so and and then like I like. I was like, oh, this card, Archfiend Soldier, 19 attack, 18 defense, four-star monster can play straight away without sacrifice and everything. I'll keep them, and I got like five of them. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't want to think about how much money I put into buying the blister packs that got me five of them. But, um, That's a lot of money. But yeah, basically, I've got this great deck, and no one to play it with, and I still really like the game. So, so you want them to come out with an online version? Yeah, a good one. 
because I mean, there's there's been console games. Yeah, the Game Boy games are for you are kind of shitty, but yes. I, I don't know if this is gonna do that because Magic Online has been very successful, but this is, this is the first one I've heard of since then. Now, yeah, now it has competition. Yeah, now it has competition. Yeah, but you've also got to keep in mind that this is Blizzard doing this, so. But they're doing it well so far, so. Well, uh, well, I, I many. This is Blizzard doing this as as a compliment to to oh. Blizzard, not as a. <laughs> well, this is Blizzard doing this. <laughs> My bad. My bad. God damn it, John. <laughs> God damn. <laughs> The, so this is, this is why your beta key's been delayed. <laughs> Fuck both of you. <laughs> well, me, I didn't I'm say anything! Well, you me. didn't have to! I heard you laughing! Yeah, Necro. <laughs> After all I did for you, Jan! I know! I'm such a bitch! God! For real, though. Where were we? Yes. I returned to my initial <laughs> statement of yes. No, I, th I think it's a good thing. I, I don't see any bad mm -hmm. thing of this, and hopefully, hopefully, people will, will just get really into get into the game and then not mind spending the odd like one dollar ninety nine here and there for two packs of cards. Mm -hmm. Because I, I, I will stress once again, opening packs of cards in this game is so fun. Like you get your little pack and it explodes and there's cards <laughs> floating around, and then you mouse over them and then they start to shimmer and there's a purple glow. You're like, oh, that's an epic card. So you save that one till last, and you open the other ones, and then you see what your epic is. And then you open that pack, and there's the orange glow. And you're like, good god, and you you click on it, it turns around, and then the little gnome yells, legendary! Like, yes! <laughs> oh, yes, I want it so bad. I, I thought it was a gnome? No, it's, uh, it's a dwarf. Everything else oh, is, in this game is a gnome, so... Are you sure he's not just a gnome in the uh, Hallow's Eve mask? Positive. He's tricking you, Necro. And it, it's not just also that they're going to be influencing the trading card la landscape. It's also that they've already done so, innovating things like specifically the mana system is so new and innovative. Oh, and it, it's very easy to. I I just remembered I was making a point about buying cards. I forget where I was going with that with that little tangent. So uh, let's forget that, but it is open. It is fun to open cards. But yeah, the new mana system that they've implemented for this is, I'm not. I wouldn't be surprised if we see this replicated in a new trading card game if one would come around, eventually yeah. as they do, because it's it's easy to understand. Like every turn, you gain a mana. Yeah, and more than that, it's you don't <clears> have <throat> to draw your freaking energy. Your every turn you pull out a new card, you get a new card, something you can actually use instead of just go, oh, uh, land. Uh, most most of the times that is the case. Yeah, and this is what Jan and I were talking about yesterday. This is the genius of Blizzard. People like to complain that Blizzard doesn't make new things, but in, in a lot of ways, that's not what what why they what they do. They iterate on other things and they make it shinier. Like they mm -hmm. make things that have already existed better. And I feel like if they do this with Hearthstone, which it looks like they have, then Magic, to, to in an effort to not just be like outblown by this, just online alone, I guess, would then have to make their stuff better. That's how innovation is supposed to work in theory. And I can mm -hmm. see it doing this in, in, in for a card game. And I'm very, I'm I'm not as knowledgeable about like the whole card game scape as Jan is, but I'm very excited to see what Blizzard or what Blizzard and Hearthstone forces other companies to do. Yeah, and at least from, from my point of view, going off that and back to what I hope to see in the future is every time a new card game has come out, Wizards, the designers, they don't copy per se, but they they take ideas and they make them their own. Like when Yu-Gi-Oh! came out a couple blocks later in Magic, we got morph cards, and morph cards were awesome. I, I have no idea what a morph card is. Is it just well, you know how in Yu-Gi-Oh you get to drop a card face down? Oh, uh, face down in defense mode, yes. Yes. Well, a morph card is kind of like that. You pay a different mana cost to drop a morph card, and then you pay, and it drops face down, and then you pay the morph cost to flip it face up, and it has an activated ability. 
Okay. So it was right, kind of like Yu-Gi-Oh, but it was a magic <laughs> twist on Yu-Gi-Oh. Yeah. So I'm so, really uh, excited to see what Blizzard does with this. Uh, or Wizards. Does, Wizard does with yeah. this. Uh, just a bit. Wizard and Blizzard. That's just... That's, just <laughs> God, that's gonna be annoying. <laughs> Uh, do uh, do you have any ideas what they might, what might appeal to them? Oh, I, I really haven't gotten enough chance to get my hands <coughs> on freaking Sorry, cards Father. yet, because Hearthstone just installed. <laughs> uh, how about a um, system where I can take my real life Magic the Gathering card, rip it up, and then build a new card that I actually want with those pieces? <laughs> <laughs> just tape two pieces together. Here we go. Well, you know what you can do is if you collect a full set of magic cards, you can send them into Wizards, and they'll send you magic online cards. That's cool. One second, um, one second. I just, if I buy a full set of cards and then send it to the company that prints the cards and say, I don't want these cards anymore, can I have virtual representations of them? They will give you some. Or, or do they give me my paper cards back, or do they like, well, these are back, these are ours now, we're going to repackage these. No, what, what I'm sorry, you're those? playing with Blizzard, not Wizard. <laughs> I don't, I oh my god, with the rhymes, I've lost track of... Lost track of where we are. Yes. Yes. So, alright, um, do we have any last points we want to make about this topic? Yeah, Necro. Have we got any last points? No, I'm I feel good. like you've been quite quiet. <laughs> I, I have rambled. Jan has been very concise. You have been quiet. Oh, I made my point. Like I said, I'm not the... I don't... I'm not the most experienced card game player, so... I can so just go by what I know Blizzard does. To? <laughs> well, I said there was. Yeah, there definitely is. I know how Blizzard operates and how companies, they're going to, Blizzard's not going anywhere. You have to compete or you're going to get uh, overtaken by Blizzard. So hopefully. That is, that is what they do. Yeah. A That's what Blizzard's from, great at. Apart from with Diablo 3. <laughs> Burn. All right, moving on. Our very last segment, which is our tip of the week. We are going to bring you a tip every week, basically try to help you be better Hearthstone players. This week's tip, versatility is key when building your deck. So, In what does that mean? That means don't build a deck with only one thing in it, like all taunt creatures. Don't do that. I, I you would like to uh, point out the one exception to this rule. It's, is. Uh, it's unless you are going with what I am calling the Murloc Rush deck. Uh, <laughs> it's no, it's it's crazy. Okay. Uh, it basically there there are a lot of Murloc cards in the game, and they're all cheap cards. Like most of them are one drop cards. There's a couple two drop. I think the highest one is a three mana cost card. Mm -hmm. But a lot of these Murlocs have uh, abilities like all of the Murlocs have plus one attack. That's Whenever great. a Murloc is summoned, gain plus one attack, and then mm -hmm. you just you—it's so easy to get them up because they're so cool. cheap. You can get like a row of seven Murlocs up. But see, that's not one thing. You're talking about pumps and creatures. I, and I'm, I'm talking sure about they're Murlocs. They're not using just those. Oh, they are. They no, are. Well, my this my mage. my response would be try yeah. that versus a mage or a paladin where they throw down consecration and th kill five of them in one spell. Oh, no, or versus you see, like, no, a, you see, like a mage. You do it as the mage. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, I, I've, I've struggled with it. It is something that you, you do need to shut down very quick, like the quest and adventurer, but it's very effective to the point where well, yes, with but, me, I just quit the game. I'm like, oh, not this again. And I quit. If they're mage, they've also got direct damage. There's more things in there. Right. And that's how... That deck isn't versatile. It's got creatures, and it's got pump, and it's got rush. That's three well, different things. A taunt every, deck is full of creatures every, that only have taunt. Yeah, but it's not like they can't do shit with that. No, but the thing is, taunt seems like it's a great thing to be like, I want a lot of these taunt cards. And then you're playing with someone who has, like, mind control, or AoE, I'll hit the whole board, or warlocks who get twisting nether that just destroy everything on the board. Uh, and then you're kind of screwed. You run out of... You, you fail at the ability to handle most players. You may be able to beat, like, totally stomp certain decks, but you will hit decks that can just handle everything you're doing 
wipe the floor with you and walk away. Oh, oh yeah, of course. I mean, and that's why versatility is key. Unless you go normal Lux. <laughs> I hate it so bad. Okay, allow me to amend my statement. If you're playing against me, versatility is key unless you're going all Merlocks. <laughs> and he'll just quit and you win on And then I'll just quit. <laughs> but I'm telling you, the Merlocks are not just one type of deck. But yeah. I hate them so bad. This, this, <laughs> this was just an excuse for me to complain about Merlocks. Tip of the week, Merlocks oh, suck. Geez. Fucking hate them. Oh, jeez. It's what I do. I don't so, care. Quicken. I don't care for your structure and like well thought out podcast. Like what we're gonna do. Like <laughs> we're gonna do this and this and this. I'm gonna bitch about Murlocs and not tell anyone about it. Jesus Christ. Well, if we want well, just to like, if we want, first one more thing before we go or or whatever whatever's coming next. Um, for example, I play a warlock and I could take that pass. Just don't play all taunt minions. For example, if I as a warlock just had only warlock cards, I would suck. That would be a terrible deck. You need to have more than just your your kit of your spells, because then you need like stuff like some all just one class doesn't have taunts. Some classes don't have heals. So like for me as a warlock, I have a lot of heals, but say like the warrior, to my knowledge, doesn't have like a heal in his just armor. warrior cards. Well, he does have armor, armor. which is kind yeah, of yeah, but yeah, but it, I, I'm talking about like actual heal heals, or like minion heals as well. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's it basically it keeps you from being stomped on. That's what it'll do. So make sure you've got a good kit of removal, unless you're a hunter, and then go complain on the forums. Okay, uh, it's just it's just why all over again. Have a little bit of direct damage. Yes, that's going to be next week's topic. <laughs> <laughs> um, have a little bit of removal. Have a little bit of direct damage. Have, if possible, have a little bit of heal. That includes an armor pump. An armor pump can be thought of as a heal. So think of it like that. Make sure you have a good balance of creatures to spells, and you will have a great deck. Anything else you guys want to talk about on our tip? You got it. Uh, I, I could mention Murlocs again, but I think... Go I'm for it, Dad. Mention Murlocs again. Fucking Murlocs. <laughs> fucking, fucking Murlocs. And I, I feel comfortable doing this because my uh, my picture is in the middle, so that clearly means I'm in charge. Yeah. So that that's what happens. Did we, we learn this on doing from the start last Sunday? <laughs> Did we really? Yeah. Uh, uh, where Gregory Howell uh, addressed the man that was standing in the middle of the people that we were <laughs> dropping the meds off because he assumed that he the the guy in the middle was the leader because that's just the way it works. Ah, all it's right. a fact. So therefore, I'm in charge. And I hate my looks. <laughs> Angry Bird disagrees. All right. So thank you for watching our very first ever episode of the Decked Out Hearthstone podcast. Again, I'm Janelle and Dunn and Necroxus are very happy to be here. Well. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I Dunn. just lost to some Murloc, so I'm not, I'm not the most pleased I could be. <laughs> about losing i'd be bitching about priests for the whole show so uh, that, that's next week <laughs> <laughs> you, you, necro you can do the tangent next week and i will be on tusk okay so stay tuned to the smoking gamer twitter and we will definitely have another show next week remember please to subscribe on youtube to the smoking gamer.com yeah and was... we're good <laughs> yes. you can take we're good thank you Bye guys. You can go you can go now guys. Bye.